So Arctic's product line was always more about performance than looks. Take the P12 for example. Those are amazing fans, but let's be honest, they don't look appealing. Then there are a ton of companies that just spit out fans that can glow in every imaginable color, but they won't blow out a candle. Now in 2021, Arctic decided to make the jump and hit the market with their version of what a well-performing and good-looking RGB fan should be. The Bionics P120A RGB. Let's see if Arctic managed to deliver and keep their standard or if, if it's just a waste of money. Today's video is sponsored by Laser3D. Are you bored by today's PC case market cause everything just looks the same? Well, fear no more, your salvation is here. Now you can finally stop buying those boring off-the-shelf cases, fire up Laser 3D's configurator and design exactly the case that you truly deserve. Do you want an extremely small PC? Check. Vented side panels for the GPU? Check. Vented top fan? Check. Hell, let's put vents everywhere. Laser 3D's newest LZX8 case is built for the real small 4-factor enthusiasts. With only 8.6 liters, it can easily fit onto your desk or even your speaker and yet it is still able to fit in a whole gaming PC, including some of those new fancy RTX 3000 cards. Check out Laser 3D's LZX8 and its configurator by clicking on the links below. Okay, let's go over the specs. Inside of the box, you will find three of these Bionics P120 ARGB fans. Each of them is a 120mm fan that is able to spin at 2300 RPM while pushing 48 CFM at 2.1mm of water. Inside of a smaller box you will also find a ARGB controller accompanied by an IR remote and a ton of proprietary plugs. And of course, the iconic Arctic phone shaped manual QR code. So when unboxing these fans, the very first thing that I noticed is Wow, those are thick. With 30mm of thickness, the Bionic P120 ARGB are significantly thicker than what we are used to with the 25mm standard. Now, this doesn't necessarily change anything except that you might need longer screws on, on radiators, but the thicker plastic does make these incredibly robust. Like, like even compared to P12s, which were already quite robust, those are just on, on another level. I mean, I, I could hit in nails with these. Now, that being said, there was a, another thing that I immediately noticed. Wait, 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 wait. In the past, in, in the past, I had my issues with ARGB controllers and the proprietary plugs that usually come along. And to be honest, I'm probably a bit prodigious about these, but after using these in several builds, I have to admit, Arctic did a pretty good job. So in general, you have two ways to hook these up. You can use the controller or you can ignore it. To ignore it, you just use the cable that comes with the proprietary plug and ends with a 5 volt addressable and a 4 pin PVM. Here, just remove the cap and plug it into the power on the fan, and on the other side, plug it into 5 volt. And, of course, the fan header, and voila! No controller, everything mainboard controlled. Now, if you want to use the controller, you just need to use the wire that starts with the fan connector and ends with another proprietary plug, where this one can be hooked up to the female version on the controller. Then you just need to provide power to the controller, and voila, it lights up. A very important step is to also attach the wires that provide the controller with PVM signal from the motherboard. Otherwise, they will just spin at maximum speed and that's, that's annoying. Also very nice is the fact that you can pass through a 4-pin RGB connection from the motherboard. For that, you just need to hook up the 4-pin RGB connector. Who would have thought? But keep in mind that there is no way to pass through a 3-pin addressable connection through the controller. For that you have to use it without the controller. Now on the controller the RGB functionality is somewhat what you would expect like on any other controller out there. But I just wanted to address one point before you get confused. So 
in order to light up, the controller uses modes, like spinning mode, fading mode, or whatever. And you are able to switch these modes by pressing the controller up and controller down button. When such a mode is active, you can switch the color that is being displayed by pressing on one of the color buttons. Now, you might think that the rainbow button is like a rainbow color, but it is actually interpreted like a mode. And if you would now try to change the color, nothing will happen. And that is because you would try to change the color of the rainbow mode, which is every color, and basically it does nothing. So what you need to do is change the mode by pressing the mode up or mode down, and then you are back to normal and you can switch the colors. Now I know that this is very far from being important, but when I was testing the control I ended up sitting there and, and pressing buttons all the time like an idiot and wondering why nothing was changing, so I just wanted to save you from that. Okay, now back on the installation, because now comes a point where Arctic really thought things through. So with one fan lighting up, you will have to daisy chain the signal to the other fans. For this you have two possibilities. You can use the included mail to mail adapter that will go into the out port of one fan and into the in port of another. And that's really cool because now you can create a small wall of fans and then just slap it in the front without worrying about wires or anything. And by using this method you would also end up with absolutely zero space in between the fans which just generally looks way better than having a couple of millimeters and a wire in between. But what if you would really need a small gap in between the fans, for example for, for radiator installations? Well, Arctic got you covered with these wires that end up with a proprietary fan port on each side. So just hook it up to one fan and then to the other one, and now you can move them around. Okay, but this cable is extremely short. What if you want to have two fans in the front and one in the back? Well, Arctic got you covered. You will also find an additional cable that starts with the fan plug and ends with that mini controller header. And because the controller has multiple outputs, you can now completely separate the fans and install them basically wherever you want. So generally, Arctic really thought about basically everything and no matter the use case, you will always be able to install them wherever you need. And even if I hate proprietary plugs, I need to admit they are sturdy as fuck. Okay. They click in nicely and they are really rigid. Like, I have to admit, a, a really nice job for proprietary stuff. Okay, but now on the important part, performance. Initially, when I was reading the spec sheets, I was confused. Compared to P12s, the Bionics P120s are pushing way less air at a slightly lower static pressure although they are spinning significantly faster. And looking at both fans, the whole blade piece is looking quite identical. So I assumed they would push somewhat the same amount of air, but they don't. So I compared the wings right on top of each other, and as it turns out, the wings on the Bionics P120 are actually a tiny bit smaller than on the P12. And that absolutely makes sense. You, you need to keep that 120mm standard and you are trying to squeeze in a whole RGB ring around it, so you need to make something else small. But apparently that lowered airflow significantly and then, and, and this is just an assumption, they try to compensate by putting a stronger motor and making it run 500 rpm faster. And now comes the tricky part because Determining if a fan is better than the other one is not as simple as reading the numbers. Looking at just raw numbers would put the P12 way ahead of the Bionics ARGB, because it's better in everything. But past experience showed that the fan speed may also be a significant factor even though the produced numbers by that speed may be smaller. And it was. In a usual test, the Bionic P120 ARGB managed to keep the 3600X at 61 degrees C, beating the P12 by 1 degrees C. The same happened when turned down to 50% fan speed. Here the Bionics managed to keep the CPU at 72 degrees C, significantly lower than the P12. But it is also very important to keep in mind that these newer fans are spinning a lot faster than the original P12s. At 50%, the P12s are pushing 900 RPM, while the Bionics are still at 1150. 
and this automatically translates into sound. They are not loud compared to lesser quality fans, but I can clearly hear that they are quite louder than the P12 on the full load. But once you turn them a bit down, I really can't tell which is louder. So, to summarize the Arctic Bionics P120 RGB. They are impressive, they perform really good, they are not too loud, especially while idling. The proprietary plugs, although I hate proprietary plugs, they are the best I've seen so far. The different ways you can install them is really great and makes them usable in basically every configuration. And because they are so well performing and they kept that high static pressure from the P12s, those would also be amazing radiator fans. But I quickly want to address the quality of the actual RGB. There is no specific mention about how many LEDs are in the, in the ring around the fan, but it, it has to be a lot. Just look at the smoothness of those lights, it's, it's amazing. So all in all, these are amazing fans from a quality, from a performance, and from a looks point of view. And when it comes to what could have been better, I actually just have one simple question. Why is there no white color option on the remote? Like, no matter what modes I go through, I, I won't be able to make these go white without using my motherboard. I, I, I don't know if they just forgot that white is a thing, but that's something you could improve. So right now they're going for around 50 euros or like 61 dollars in the US and this places them somewhere in the center of RGB sets. Like, they are more expensive than white label brands, but they are also very much beneath really expensive ones. But they can perform like expensive ones. But I guess developing a proprietary plug and making sure that you can install them in various ways does come at a cost. So I still think it's very much alright. Though, it is unusually high for Arctic. Okay, so this should sum it up for the Arctic Bionics P120 ARGB. At this point, I would like to thank Arctic for providing us these amazing fans that can double as a hammer. And I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if so, make sure to leave a like, and be subscribed to not miss the next Arctic review, because they also sent over a pair of their P12 ARGB 0DB and those have a plastic ring connecting each fan blade. So that one is gonna be interesting. See you next time.